Rise of the Ronin is finally here, but before playing, there are loads of settings you should change to activate hidden gameplay features, improve the graphics, and more. You don't want to miss any of these. The first setting is under the controls menu, and is to change your controller mapping to the hold to sprint option. By default, you sprint using circle, which is really weird in my opinion, but changing it to the hold to sprint option means you just run forwards and push in L3 to trigger sprinting. I find this a lot easier and much more comfortable too, is it's how every other game that I play works. Moving on, setting number two is an absolute must change as the default option will completely ruin the audio experience for most of us playing. Go to a language and audio options, then down to audio output, and change this to 3D audio effects if you're using headphones, or surround if you're using a home theatre system. Most games do automatically detect your audio device and set this accordingly, but Rise of the Ronin just seems to assume you're using TV speakers and defaults to stereo because of that. Therefore, if you are using headphones and don't change this, you won't get any real directional audio at all, and the audio experience takes a huge hit. If this setting has helped you out, please drop a like as well as consider subscribing to help me reach my goal of 100,000 subscribers. I'd really appreciate it, and as all my content is PlayStation focused, I'm sure you won't regret it. Anyway, the third setting is under game settings, and is to enable the assassinate button under of the hood category. Now once an enemy has been stunned, there is a triangle button prompt in the lock-on marker which helps to ensure you don't forget to press it as without it, you might find yourself just continuing to slash away and wasting stamina instead of just assassinating them. I'm uh, speaking from experience there. Setting number 4 is also under this hood section and is to enable the damage to enemies option. This results in damage numbers being displayed each time you hit an enemy, which I find works quite well in an RPG like this. It arguably reduces the cinematic feeling a little though, so it is personal preference. If you do like it, you can turn it on for damage for yourself and to allies as well, but I find that to be a little excessive, so I've personally only kept it for enemies. Oh, and speaking of combat, let me know in the comments which blade sharpening origin you chose and I'll make sure to heart it. I went with the killer option, but would love to know your choice too, so get commenting. Anyway, the fifth setting is back in the controls menu and is to reduce the hold time option. This adjusts how long you have to hold the button down to interact with things such as chests and banners, so bringing it down a bit can make the game feel a little snappier and faster paced. Experiment with it yourself, but I've personally found two to be the sweet spot. Moving further down this menu, you can find setting number six, which is to enable auto collect items. This just means that instead of needing to hit a button to pick items up, the game will automatically do so for you when you're near them, ensuring you don't miss anything. The seventh setting is in the camera settings and is to increase both camera speed values. Personally, I find that the default of five is just a little slow, and increasing it to some something like 7 makes the game feel a lot more responsive. That is ultimately just my own preference though, so do experiment with these values for yourself to find what works best for you. Also in these camera options is setting number 8, which is to increase the camera distance value. Again, this is sort of personal preference, so play around with it, but I've increased mine to the maximum value of 4 as it allows you to see so much more of your surroundings. This not only heightens your appreciation for the environments, but it also gives you an advantage advantage in combat as you can see more enemies around you as well as see them sooner, thus giving you more time to react to their attacks. Now, moving over to the visuals tab, the ninth setting is to turn off the frame rate limit if you are using the graphics or ray tracing mode. This will result in frame rates higher than 30 FPS, though performance will be more variable as your maximum frame rate count is going to be higher whilst the minimum remains the same. All that said, I personally recommend that you go with the 60 FPS performance mode anyway, as that's where you'll get the most fluid feeling experience, which I think is vital for a more gameplay focused game like this. So, assuming you are using the performance mode then, that takes us to setting number 10, which is to disable motion blur. When playing at frame rates of 60 and above, it is widely agreed that games tend to look better with it turned off, 
and that stands for Rise of the Ronin 2. Just bear in mind that it is sort of an accessibility feature to reduce motion sickness for some people, which is why it's on by default. Regardless of which graphics mode you choose though, you'll definitely want to turn off the 11 setting, which is chromatic aberration. This adds a weird rainbowy sort of lens effect to some parts of the screen, and I personally don't think it looks good at all. You may also want to experiment with the options for depth of field, vignetting, and noise, as they are all on by default. However, I do find that these stylistic looks all work well for the setting of Rise of the Ronin, and noise specifically is quite useful at making flatter textures appear as though they are more detailed. Speaking of detail, if you want to hear more of it in your game's audio, you might be interested in PlayStation's Pulse Elite headset, and you can see my full, honest review and guide of it by clicking the video on screen now. Also, please drop a like if any of these settings helped you, as well as subscribe to help me reach that goal of 100,000. I'd really appreciate it.